Hello everybody and welcome back to the Lost Planeswalker. You're here with me, Jesse the Lost Planeswalker, and today I am building the Myco Tyrant Commander deck. This is a brand new commander in the first of my seven day series where I do seven straight days of Lost Caverns of Ixalan Commander decks. And I want to start with the Myco Tyrant. He is one black and a green legendary creature Elder Fungus with Trample. The Myco Tyrant's power and toughness are each equal to the number of creatures you control that are fungi and or sapperlings. At the beginning of your end step, create X11 black fungus creature tokens with this creature can't block, where X is the number of times you descended this turn. So the Myco Tyrant is kind of a interesting card because normally, you know, when we see these fungus commanders, we expect them to be have white in them as well, but this was just purely black and green, which is not terrible. There's a lot of really, really good creatures, artifacts, enchantments, sorceries that all make sapperlings or fungi creatures that are in black black and green. So that's going to be the main focus of this deck moving forward. We're kind of going to have cards that focus around making those tokens while themselves are fungus creatures. We then go to cards that are, you know, helpful. And then we also got that good stuff category at the end to help get you more or take advantage of them. So one last thing I want to mention about the Myco Tyrant before we move forward is Descend is an interesting new mechanic. And it's something I'm going to do a video on here, maybe if I haven't already. The way Descend works is you descend each time a permanent card is put into your graveyard from anywhere. When I first read this, I was like, great. You can just sacrifice all of these sapperlings and fungus tokens, and then the Myco Tyrant's going to make that many at the beginning of your end step. But that's not correct. I, I did some research into this because I thought it was a little confusing. Descending is particularly permanent cards that end up in your graveyard. Tokens are permanent tokens. They are permanents, but they're not cards. They're tokens. And that's something really important. You know, also, any instants or sorceries don't count. They are just talking about permanent cards. So creatures, artifacts, enchantments, battles, you know, all that sort of stuff lands. That's what they care about. So m keep that in mind when you're playing this deck because it can be a little confusing. And, you know, the way that they worded this, they didn't really do a good job, I guess, explaining it as to what is a permanent card versus a permanent token. So just keep that in mind. Like always, I'm going to start out with the lands in this deck. And the lands are real simple. I just put forests and swamps in here. The Micro Tyrant is three mana, not very, you know, heavy mana dependency having, you know, multiple of one or the other now there are a bunch of cards in this deck that do have you know double green pips i don't think there's as many double black pips so that's something to keep in mind and this deck is definitely a lot more green heavy because that's what fungi and sapperlings you know really are so when you're building out this land base keep that in mind so now we're going to dive right into token madness that's the first category where i'm just going to talk about all the cards that make you tokens you know that's really important in this deck and uh so starting off we have blight reaper thalid brood rage mycoid and death bloom thalid so blight reap thalid transforms into blight sower thalid and this is where you get that creature token this is in particular a phyrexian sapperling creature token but it is also a fungus so it's going to count similarly another new card from this set is the brood rage mycoid that makes you a 1-1 black fungus creature token that can't block at the beginning of your end step if you descended this turn which you can get multiple every turn which is great because it will just grow the myco tyrant and death bloom thalid makes a 1-1 green sapperling creature token when it dies next up is druid satchel fist of ironwood and fungal sprouting druid satchel says to tap reveal top card of your library if it's a creature create a 1-1 green sapperling creature token if it's a land put it onto the battlefield under your control if it's a non-creature non-land you gain two life fist of the ironwood just makes two green sapperling creature tokens and gives whatever creature you equip it to trample and fungal sprouting puts x one on green creature sapperlings tokens on the battlefield where x is the greatest power among creatures you control which is actually going to be pretty decent because if the micro tyrant is let's say a 10 10 you get 10 things and he grows in power to 20. this is definitely a deck where commander damage does matter because all of your creatures and all of the tokens are just going to add to his power you can get a really big trampling creature very quickly next up is golgari germination greener pastures and jade mage Golgari Germination is going to create you those 1-1 one, one sapling creature tokens whenever a non-token creature dies, which is super great in this deck. Greener Pastures is going to create these 1-1 one, one green sapling creature tokens for everybody. Now, it's not the best, but, you know, there is some ramp, but there's probably going to be another green player at the table who's ramping harder than you, and you're just going to create these for the table, and you really don't care. You know, people are going to be happy that you're helping them out because the Myco Tyrant has trample, so we really don't care if we give away these 1-1s. One, and Jade Mage for two 
two and a green can create a one one green sapling creature token next up is life and limb morbid bloom and the Mako loft life and limb turns all force into one one green sapling creature tokens and force which is super great for us we're gonna basically just be able to get all of our lands being sapperlings and power up our commander morbid bloom remove target creature card in a graveyard from the game and then we put x 1 1 green sapling creature tokens into play where x is the removed cards toughness which whether that's from our graveyard or our opponents we get to make a bit of tokens there and the mycoloth is a really cool fungus creature with devour two meaning as it enters we can sack any number of creatures and it enters with twice that many plus one plus one counters on it and at the beginning of your upkeep create a 1 1 green sapling creature token for each plus one plus one counter on it so potentially if we devour three creatures it gets six plus one plus ones it's a 10 10 and we get six sapperlings at the beginning of our upkeep necrogenesis neomot grove guardian and neomot primeval warden are next necrogenesis says two exile target creature card from a graveyard create a 1 1 green sapling creature token along with getting rid of cards from our graveyard we can get rid of stuff from our opponents to keep them from their other reanimating or just get some value out of it neomot grove guardian for two and a green creates a sapling or we can sack a sapling to give sapling creatures plus one plus one until end of turn similarly neomot primeval warden has reach if a creature opponent control would die instead you create a 1-1 one, one green sapling creature token and exile that creature. You can either sacrifice two saplings to draw a card or sack a sapling to make this bigger until end of turn. A lot of versatility. One of my friends has a commander deck where this is built around and it's very, very powerful. Next up is Night Soil, Overgrown, Armosaurus, and Psychotrope Thalid. Night Soil says, one, exile two creature cards from a single graveyard, put a 1-1 one, one green sapling creature token onto the battlefield. Not quite as good as Necrogenesis, but it is only one mana instead of two, so potentially we can get more creatures in this process. Overgrown Armosaurus has enraged whenever Overgrown Armosaurus is dealt damage, create a 1-1 one, one green sapling creature token. And Psychotrope Thalid is one of the first cards we're gonna see here that get these spore counters. And the way these spore counters work is you remove three of them to put a 1-1 one, one green sapling creature token onto the battlefield. We also get the additional benefit of sacking a sapling to draw a card. Savage Thalid, Scatter the Seeds, and Slimefoot Stowaway are next. Again, Savage Thalid has the spore counter. We remove three of them put a 1-1 one, one green sapling creature token into play, and we can sack one to regenerate target fungus, which is great because our commander is a fungus, most of our creatures are a fungus, so if something's getting targeted, we can just regenerate it real easily. Scatter the Seeds has Convoke, and we can put three 1-1 one, one sapling creature tokens onto the battlefield. We're just gonna have so many little tokens that it's gonna be so easy to pay for this. In Slimefoot, the Stowaway says whenever a sapling control dies, this deals one damage to each opponent and you gain one life. This could honestly be a devastating card because we're just going to be creating so many of these little sapperlings that just passively we're going to be killing our opponents and for four mana create a 1-1 one, one green sapling creature token not really that great but there are a couple cards in this deck that kind of just give everything mana production so that actually might create us quite a few spontaneous generation spore mound and spore sower thalid are next spontaneous generation is a sorcery that puts a 1-1 one, one green sapling creature token into play for each card in your hand there's a lot of ways we can draw a lot of cards in this deck so at least making seven is not you know unheard of with this card spore mound is a landfall whenever a land enters we create a 1-1 one, one green sapling creature and spore sower thalid says at the beginning of your upkeep put a spore counter on each fungus you control then remove three spore counters from spore sower thalid create a 1-1 one, one green sapling creature token this is going to help all those cards that care about the spore tokens but everything else is just going to get them anyways next is spore oloth ancient tender shoot dryad and thalid spore oloth ancient says at the beginning of your upkeep put a spore counter on it creatures you control have removed two spore counters from this creature create a 1-1 green sapling creature token that's where this spore thrower thalid becomes very very powerful it's gonna put it on all of our tokens if they're fungus and all of our other funguses so we're just gonna be able to make a ton of sapperlings very easily tender shoot dryad has ascend meaning if you have 10 or more permanents you get the city's blessing for the rest of the game at the beginning of your upkeep create a 1-1 one, one green sapling creature token and then saplings you control get plus two plus two as long as you have the city blessing turning all of our one ones into three threes making us an even bigger threat and the thalid says the beginning of your upkeep put a spore counter on it remove three put a 1-1 one, one green sapling creature token onto the battlefield now this is a point where i want to say if you aren't subscribed to my channel and are enjoying this video and want to see the rest of these videos for the rest of the week please consider subscribing i try to put out at least one commander deck a week and this is this is a special seven episode event one every day this week if you have any suggestions on other videos or concepts you'd like to see me do you know please leave them down in the comments 
but uh, this deck list is going to be up in the description below if you want to check it out. So let's continue on with our fungus creature. Next is Thalid Devourer, Thalid Germination, and Thalid Shell Dweller. Thalid Devourer says during your upkeep, put a spore counter on it. Zero, remove three spore counters from Thalid Devourer, put a sapperling creature token into play. Zero, sack a sapperling, give Thalid Devourer plus one plus two until end of turn. There's a lot of cards in this set, just like this one, where you can just buff up a creature out of nowhere, you know, after blockers are declared, they're like, oh, there's two two swinging in, I'm not gonna block it, and just sack a bunch of sapperlings to deal a ton of damage. Super Super, super easily. Thalid Germinator says at the beginning of your upkeep, put a spore counter on it, remove three to create a 1 1 sapling creature token, and sack a sapling. Target creature gets plus one plus one until end of turn. And Thalid Shell Dweller is Defender. At the beginning of your upkeep, put a spore counter on it, and remove three, create a 1 1 green sapling creature token. Next is Thorn Thalid, Tuska Tongue Thalid, and Underseller Mycoid. Thorn Thalid says during your upkeep, put a spore counter on it, remove three spore counters, and have it deal one damage to any target. Tukatang Thalid says when it dies, create a 1 1 green sapling creature token, and Underseller Mycoid says whenever it enters or dies, create a 1 1 green sapling creature token. In addition, you can tap it to add one man of any color. Next up is Utopia Mycon, Verdant Embrace, and Verdant Force. Utopia Mycon, at the beginning of your upkeep, put a spore counter on it, remove three spore counters, create a 1 1 green sapling creature token. Sack a sapling, add one man of any color. This we can basically abuse and cast a bunch of spells very early on by sacking those little tokens. Verdant Embrace says, Enchanted Creature gets plus three, plus three, and has at the beginning of each upkeep, create a 1 1 green sapling creature token. And Verdant Force says, at the beginning of each upkeep, create a 1 1 green sapling creature token. This 7 7 is gonna definitely produce a lot of these little sapperlings. Verdaloth the Ancient, Vitaspore Th Thalid, and Yavamaya Shepherd are next. Verdaloth the Ancient is a legendary creature tree folk with kicker X. Sapling creatures and other tree folk creatures get plus one plus one. When Verdaloth the Ancient enters the battlefield, if it was kicked to create X 1 1 green sapling creature token. Vitaspore Thalid puts a spore counter on it. The beginning of your upkeep, remove three to put a 1 1 green sapling creature token into play, and you can sack a sapling. Target creature gains haste until end of turn. And finally, Yavamaya Shepherd, when it enters the battlefield, create a 1 1 green sapling creature token. So now real briefly, I'm going to go over some other fungus cards or other things that make tokens to help you round out some of those uh, things you're trying to do. So first off, we have Bastion of Remembrance, Boneyard, Mycodrax, and Cankerbloom. Bastion of Remembrance is an enchantment that doesn't make a sapperling, but makes a 1-1. One, one. But whenever a creature you control dies, each opponent loses one and you gain one. This is going to be a devastating card that, you know, if you're making two creatures with every creature you cast, and then both of those die, you're just going to be dealing a ton of damage. Boneyard, Mycodrax, power and toughness are equal to the number of other creature cards in your graveyard, which is super great for us. It also has Scavenge for four in a black. Exile this creature from your graveyard. Put a number of plus one plus one counters equal that card's power to target creature. Scavenge only is a sorcery. So if there's 10 creatures in your graveyard and you scavenge this, you get to put 10 plus one plus one counters on anything, which is super cool. And Canker Bloom, super cool utility card. You can sack it to destroy target artifact, destroy target target enchantment or proliferate which is actually pretty viable because there are so many cards that have these spore counters in this deck next up is death bonnet sprout molder hulk and mycoid spore tender death bonnet sprout says the beginning of your upkeep mill a card then if there are three or more creature cards in your graveyard transform it it transforms into a death bonnet hulk that says the beginning of your upkeep you may exile a card from your graveyard if a creature card was exiled this way, put a plus one plus one counter on Death Bonnet Hulk. Molder Hulk has a cool undergrowth ability that says this spell costs one less to cast for each creature card in your graveyard. When Molder Hulk enters the battlefield, return target land card from your graveyard to the battlefield. And Myconoid Spore Tender says infesting spores. When Myconoid Spore Tender enters the battlefield, destroy up to one target artifact or enchantment. And lastly, we have Rhizome Lurker. Spore Crown Thalid in in Thalid Soothsayer. Rhizome Lurcher has undergrowth as well, and it enters the battlefield with a number of plus one plus one counters on it equal to the number of creature cards in your graveyard, which is probably gonna be a lot. Because <laughs> these guys aren't big, but they're gonna be great for making tokens and descending. Spore Crown Thalid says each other creature you control that's a fungus or sapling gets plus one plus one. And Thalid Soothsayer says two sack a creature, draw a card. 
So next up, we have the good stuff cards. These are the good things that are going to be able to take advantage of those tokens even more and just give us some good benefits. Maybe it's uh, mana rocks, maybe it's enchantments, artifacts. Let's see. So first off, we have Arcane Signet, Astronaut's Altar, and Commander Sphere. Arcane Signet obviously is going to help us mana fix. Astronaut's Altar is going to be able to create a ton of mana by sacking those sapperlings. And Commander Sphere, again, mana fix a little bit, but we can also sack it to draw a card later on. Cryptolith Right. Death Reaper Ritual and Doubling Season are next. Cryptolith Right says creatures you control have tap, add one mana of any color to your mana pool. Using all of those sapperlings and all the, you know, plentiful tokens, we're going to be able to tap for a ton of mana to just continue to cast stuff. Death Reaper Ritual has Morbid at the beginning of each end step. If a creature died this turn, you may draw a card. You know, pairing that up with Ashenod's Altar is just going to draw you more and more cards every turn. And Doubling Season says if effect would create one or more tokens, it creates double those instead. Also, very important because we have so many spore counters if an effect would put one or more counters on a permanent you control it puts twice that many counters on that permanent instead very very powerful next is eldrazi monument elven chorus and fecundity eldrazi monument is a very powerful artifact that gives all your creatures plus one plus one flying and indestructible at the beginning of your upkeep, you have to sack a creature, and if you can't, you have to get rid of Eldrazi Monument, but all of those 1-1s one are now going to gain flying, plus 1, plus 1, and indestructible, so your board is going to be very, very threatening. Elven Chorus says you can look at the top card of your library anytime. You may cast creature spells from the top of your library, which is the majority of the deck, and creatures you control have tapped at a mana of any color, just like Cryptolith Right, but just even better. And Fecundity says whenever a creature dies, that creature's controller may draw a card. Obviously, we have so many ways to get rid of those little sapperlings and killing your own creatures to get value, and this is just going to add more to that. This is a effect that affects everybody around the table, so don't be surprised if somebody else takes advantage of this as well, but you're probably going to be able to take advantage of it the most. Golgari Charm, Golgari Signet, and Parallel Lives are next. Golgari Charm is going to give all creatures get minus one, minus one until end of turn. Probably not best for our deck. Destroy Target Enchantment is really good, and Regenerate each creature you control is even better. Golgari Signet, just a mana rock for one, tap to add a black and green, and Parallel Lives. If an effect will put one or more tokens onto the battlefield you control, it puts twice that many instead just another way to get even more tokens and lastly we have skull clamp soul ring and swift foot boots skull clamp is going to be able to get rid of our little tokens to draw us a ton of cards soul ring single mana tap it add two and swift foot boots is going to be great because we can give our commander hexproof and haste keeping it from being removed from our opponent's spells but that is it Thank you so, so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed. What do you think about this deck? Is there too many fungus in it? Are there other cool sapperling or fungus creatures that I'm forgetting? Is there another strategy I should be encompassing? I would love to see what you have to say in the comments down below. This was actually a pretty fun deck to build. I didn't think it was going to go this way, per se. I didn't really realize how many funguses there were that made sapperling creature tokens, because I've never investigated it. But this looks like a super fun deck. And uh, yeah, if you aren't subscribed, please do so. You know, we are very, very close to 1,300, and I'd love to be at 1,500 by the end of the year. So if you would join me and you want to see more of these videos as I release them this week, you know, please do so. But thank you, thank you, thank you. In today's Scryfall, card of the day is Fog Patch. Realizing they weren't getting past the fog, the elves did the only thing they could do. Wait, thank you so much for watching, and as always, I'll see you later, planeswalkers.